freedom to learn a lot let me allow you to then uh, take over and and speak to us we are we are all ears the lord is about to change our perspective of worship i can feel it in my head i can feel it in my Amen. heart mm. indeed 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 you know it, it, even when 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 we spoke and just are conceptualizing on tonight's episode you know and for the fact that it's women's month you know and and even though you're having a male guest but i felt that no let's maybe let's empower the woman in the church you know the women in the church because because for, for for too long you know women have been taking the back seat you know and and, and i think it, it really blew my mind when i thought uh, uh, I, was, I was patients because when i studied the subject of worship in the bible as a matter of fact to teach us praise and worship you know god in his divine wisdom he chose to use what's it now females you know, I mean, the first mention of the word praise in the Bible comes from the mouth of a woman by the name of Leah. In Genesis 29, verse 35, meaning the context of Leah's life is the basis from which we can learn actually what praise is about. You know, and, 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 and obviously, you know, I know maybe some, some of the listeners or, or the viewers will know this, that there are different biblical uh, principles that are used to interpret scripture. And the one that I want to use, particularly for praise, is the principle of uh, called first mention. Mm -hmm. It teaches that anywhere in the Bible we find a word for the first time. That's where we must zoom in. Mm -hmm. Because either we will learn the definition or the description or the proper way to apply that word. So the word praise is mentioned for the first time in the Bible in Genesis 29, verse 35. Mm. The Bible says, Leah bore the fourth son mm. to Jacob, mm. and she named him, and, and she said, This time I will praise the Lord. This time, this and time, this time, this time. Now, at, at this fourth attempt, I will <laughs> praise the Lord. You know what it means? Oh my goodness, mm. what it means is that the first with that with the birth of the first three sons. The intent was not to praise the Lord, but it was to get the attention of Jacob. Mm. So God had to use a woman to teach us, men and women, how the biblical perception of praise. You know, <laughs> God had to use this and. I, yes. I, 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 I am hearing something as you speak, you know, when, when Leah said, this time I will praise the Lord, you know, it literally says to us, praise your way out of your situation, man, you know, she, 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 she was looking for attention, you know, she, she was bathing, applying makeup, you know, doing eyebrow pencil. I'm talking about the today's Leah, ne? this one, this Leah, yeah, you see, yeah, this yeah, Leah, yeah, yeah, you yeah. see, this Leah, you know, was trying to you know, haircut earrings that and, and it didn't work, it didn't work. So I am I am hearing, you know, when everything else fails, worship. Oh, Ooh. right there, right there. And and, 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 and I love hey. how God set up this scenario for us. Oh man. Because one thing that you would notice when when we look at the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. The tabernacle, the processions, that's from the outside, trying to make your way inside. Because the climax of the tabernacle was the Holy of Holies. That's where the Shekinah glory was. But how God worked in the Old Testament, he was working from outside, inside. So that when Jesus comes through the cross, he's going to flip the scale. That now we work from inside, Outward. I, 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 God is smart. So now watch it. With Leah, he, uh, he allowed her to try everything else first and let it fail. So that when she finally tries God and she breaks through, the lesson for us, we need to take the lesson in reverse. All right. All right. You're talking. You're talking. Bring it up. That now. For me, I don't have to try other things first, like Leah. Because I might not make it past the second or the third. I might as well go for the right one, the this climax. Might, this might be my only chance. This, where we are, there is no room for comeback. You gotta strive to get it right in the first attempt. Guess what? 
not everybody has the grace to learn from their mistakes. I finish me. Ladies, if you're listening to me, because we're speaking to women in this woman's man, the lesson we are learning from Leah is that not all of us have the privilege to, to miss it with the first son and call the son Reuben, and miss it with the second son and call the son, the son Simeon, and miss it with the third son and call the son Le Levi, and finally get it with the fourth attempt, that your attention must never be on a man. But your attention should have been on God in the first place. Guess what? Listen to what the Bible says. If you are watching us now, look at Genesis 29 verse 35. I want you to see it from scripture. Because I want us to pull the truth from the Bible instead of bringing our ideas. It says, Leah bore the fourth son. She, for she said, this time I will praise the Lord and named him Judah. Listen to the last sentence. The Bible says, then she stopped giving birth. She, she why did she stop? She stopped giving birth because she finally came to the right. She had reached the climax. She has reached the climax. There is nothing for you as ladies beyond focusing on God. Ladies, I'm at Ambazan. I'm at Ambazan. Can you hear? Oh, man, man, man. Ah, man. See, this is going to fireworks. Let's just learn from these women in the Bible. You know, so, and with the first three attempts, Leah was trying, her focus was on man, was on winning Jacob's attention, not realizing that God has already gave her his, wait a minute, let me rephrase that. She was trying to win Jacob's affection, Jacob's love, because Jacob never loved her. Not knowing that God has already given her his attention. So, so, so I mean, God gave. So, what yes, you're yes, saying? Yes, what you're saying is that as a woman, I should actually chase after God. And, and when I have found God, you know, God is the magnet. You know, God is the magnet. He's the center of attention. You know, I am, I am more attractive when, when I am filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, I had Jesus Christ. I, indeed, indeed, because she's been giving birth, trying to win Jacob's attention. Ooh. And Jacob never loved her. Guess what, ladies? Listen to me. Rachel, Leah's rival, Rachel got from Jacob something that Leah was trying to get with children, and yet Rachel enjoyed it without any son. I, ladies, we are not bearing children to please anyone. Eh? Thank you. Siavan, 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 and eh? you see, Siavan, indeed, like close. You know what I'm saying? Because if somebody doesn't love you, it doesn't matter what you do for them. Because their will, not even God, can flip it around. Um, God can only work. You know, you remind me of the devil. You know, no matter how good things you do for him, that man, he, he, he just doesn't <laughs> love you. I... He doesn't. You know, at the end of, after he used you, he's going to dump you. Hey, you that I mean? man. So, 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 so... So, 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 so the lesson you are learning from Leah is that, watch it now, this, this is the lesson now of worship from this number one woman, is that praise does not depend on your external conditions, mm. but it depends on your internal conviction. Mm. Conviction. Not conditions. Mm. What is it that you know about God? regardless of the facts you have about your situation. <laughs> Praise is not motivated by our conditions. Her condition was hostile, was unfavorable. But her praise came from her conviction. Leah had to pause and say, even though Jacob does not love me, guess what? God has favored me to be the woman who gives birth to the first four nations of Israel? And all along, her eyes were closed to what the Lord is doing because she was yes. focusing on a man who was not even looking at her. 
No, 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 no. Jacob was looking at her from a natural point of view. Jacob saw a woman with twisted eyes. But you not understand? with affection but, like Rachel. Born. The Bible says when God saw that Leah was unloved, the Bible says God opened Leah's womb. You know, even if people don't love you, but you can praise him that you are productive. Not because of any man, but because of the hand of God that is upon your life. She was favored already. She was favored already. She was favored. You know, but sometimes we look at things that are below the higher grace that God has given us. And because of your focus, you will die in depression. You will die in stress. You will die in frustration. And yet, when Rachel looks at you, when she's alone, Rachel says, but Leah is so blessed. But when Leah looks at herself, she says, oh, but I'm not loved like Rachel. Hey, ladies, the lesson from Leah is stop comparing yourself with other Rachel. Focus on what God has already. Oh, my word. The Bible says when she focused on God, she stopped trying to act up in competition. Oh, man, we are stopping it. We are stopping it. Girl, stop it, man. If you do eyebrows, do them for yourself. I exactly. Jesus. You see what I mean? So now, let, let, me, let me wrap up this first lesson on Leah. Now, this is a takeaway. Remember that God made a promise to Abraham mm -hmm. that I will make you the father of many, many nations. nations. Mm -hmm. and, Jake, and, and Abraham gave birth to a son called Isaac. Mm -hmm. Isaac gave birth to, to two sons, mm -hmm. Esau and Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Jacob was the one that was appointed to initiate the fathering of many nations. Mm -hmm. to give birth to the many nations. Guess who was the woman who had the honor to give birth to the first four sons? The one with it was twisted, Leah. twisted eyes. The unloved one. You see what I mean? Exactly. I know sometimes as women, you might feel that your body shape, you don't like how you feel, you don't like how you look, you don't like your eyes, you don't like the fact that your hairline is not where it's supposed to be. Guess what? Move your focus from your physique. I'm talking to some ladies tonight. I know when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't like what you see in the mirror in your bedroom. But guess what? Come to the mirror of the way. This mirror will show you how much God has favored you. It wow. doesn't matter who doesn't pay attention to you at home, who doesn't pay attention to you at church. Know that God has already favored you. You are a critical instrument in the fulfillment of God's promise to someone in the previous generations. So please, lift your head up, put on your stilettos, and get on your purpose. Fulfill what God has called you to do, whether you have men's applause or not. But heaven is looking down on you and say, Leah, you gave us the nation of Judah, from which came the Messiah. Mm. All right. What honor? What honor do you want? It's subtle. Even if, it's Jacob, subtle. even if Jacob doesn't love you anymore, listen, you had the privilege to kickstart the nation through which the Savior of the world came. So Leah, wherever you're watching us tonight, take courage, my sister. Don't allow your twisted eyes to rob you from what God is doing in your life. That's the lesson about praise you are learning from Leah, that you can praise God even in those conditions. Right now, you can lift up your eyes. Please look at your life and see how God has favored you, even if people don't favor you. You might not be man's election, but you are God's selection. You, let me say it again, if you're writing down. You may not be men's electing, election. When people elect their favorites, they may not put a cross next to your faith. But guess what? Heaven looked down on you. Heaven saw your twisted eyes. But heaven saw your pure womb. And heaven has selected you. Amen. Even if man does not elect you. Ah, Jesus. You finished it off. You just preached the whole Bible. <laughs>
All right, let us take it on. Let us take it on. The next yeah. one, the next so, one. So, so, now, now let's come to the next, the next lady. The next lady, let's look at Esther. All right. When I was studying worship, and, 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 and I was asking the Lord, how do I teach the church about the practicality of worship? Of worship. We, we, we normally, we have, we, we have a, a saying that worship is a lifestyle. And I asked the Holy Spirit, if worship is the lifestyle, who where in the Bible can I derive the practicality of the life of worship? And surprisingly, God sent me to the life of Esther. But but we we know David now. Now why are you changing us? You're changing our minds now. Okay, tell us about. I know Esther. you know David. Mm -hmm. No 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 no. David is teaching us the principles of worship, but he's not teaching us the the practicality necessarily. The okay. day to day. All right, let's go to Esther. The day to day. And Esther, and I said, why Esther? Number one, God said is because es Esther's life is 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 demonstrated within the kingdom concept. Okay. I said, okay. Okay. All right. All right. You know, within the kingdom concept, we know I'm not going to deal with how she came in mm -hmm. after the disqualification of Vashti. I won't go there, you know, yeah, for, for, for the sake of, of, of some some other issues. Yeah. But let me just zoom straight to Esther in the interest of time. When when King uh, Ahasuerus uh, set up a, a, a pageant for the virgins of the land, to come and parade themselves before the king so he can appoint a replacement for Vashti. Now watch it. The Bible says all the ladies who came, the hopeful, the aspiring ladies who came in, they were all given resources to prepare themselves okay. so they can appear before the king. Okay. Oh, I'm feeling hot already. Yeah. Flip. So they were all they, they were all given resources, perfumes and spices, spices. and jewelries. Mm -hmm. So so they can do the best they can, stay there, mm -hmm. to appear before the king. When all of them did that, the Bible says Esther went to the assistant of the king. And he said to her, to him, tell me, oh I love this heart, what does the king like? Wait a minute. When everybody was going to Google how to please Mr. Wright, when everybody was going to Facebook how to get men's attention, when everybody was going to Twitter how to catch Mr. Wright, Esther never went there. Esther went to the assistant of the king. The one that knows it all. Him, the one that knows what pleases the king and said to him, tell me what in the heart of my law Meaning Esther refused to come before her Lord, the king, with her own works. Without inside info. Without, in, inside, Without info. inside info. So, 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 literally, you're saying to me that when I go to worship, when I worship God, I should ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to. Yeah. The one, the, one, the one that knows the mind of God, you know, he knows how I should worship God. So I approach the throne room of grace with inside information. I Watch it now. So now, when I saw that in scripture, I got frustrated. You know what I did? This is patient. Well, I, went, I went to YouTube and I looked for a movie that depicts this the Esther movie, and I watched the whole movie because I wanted to see it now in pictures how that scenario play out. But now the the presentation of the movie actually gave me even there. In the movie, the the assistant of the king takes all the ladies to the king's treasure, and the, the, that guy he opens the king's treasure. He says to all the ladies, "Go inside." Take any jewelry that you want just to embellish yourselves. Take anything in the king's treasure. All the other ladies ran inside to take whatever they think, whatever they think, whatever they determined. And Esther never ran with them. Esther was standing at the door. And this servant of the king looked at this girl and the servant said, why aren't you as excited as them? Why aren't you going inside? In the movie depiction, Esther said, 
how can I choose when I know not what my king likes? Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Hey, man, that hit me so now you are finishing me. me so hard. Hey. You know what, man? Tina, we just plan, you know what we call the worship. We line up the songs. We're going to start with the slow one. Then uh, we sing the Zulu one. Hey, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. So, we're messing up. We are messing up. We are messing up. That is why now, when all these ladies now had to appear before the king, all of them were coming one after another. They were not coming as a crowd, one after another, to teach me that in worship, although we are 200 in the building, but God receives our worship one after another because he's ticking the box. Hey, it's not a worship whose team idea thing, man. Is this? Hey. Whose, whose idea is this? Where did you get this concept? Who told you I like this? So now the Bible says, when they came before the king, guess what? Now this is how I dramatize this. All the other, all the ladies, when they appeared before the king, the king said, nice effort. I'm not microphone. The king said, the, the king said, oh, nice effort. Ooh, nice, but not good enough. Nice effort, but not good enough. Hmm, nice, but, but when Esther appeared, when all the other ladies appeared, came before the king, the king saw their effort and he clapped, but he never chose them. But when the but when Esther walked in, watch it now. Here it is. The king did not see another potential. The king saw his heart personified. Hi. I. The, the, king, the king saw his desires walking on two legs. And the king said, "This one, I'm taking her." So now the lesson I'm learning from that is that in our attempt to worship, let us stop trying to impress God with things that we got from anywhere else except that which we have asked the Holy Spirit. Therefore, for us as worship leaders and pastors of churches, we need to build a culture of asking the Holy Spirit which songs must we sing on Sunday? So, no, 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 no. So, so, we don't come up. I, 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 Mara, yeah. Mara, I get it. I get it. There is a, a new song on, on TV. There's a new release. I, I, what are you talking about? Because now there's a new release. There's a new song. There's a famous song. Everybody is looking forward. Uh, you know, often you see has sent us the song of the, of the moment. And then when I, when I you say we must go and, and, and as I understand, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is a spirit of truth, you know, he will teach us all things, but he teaches us even what we know. I mean, see Google, she learned, see how Yes. And now, you see, you see, the problem with that is that that new song that you just heard on one gospel may not align with what God has already determined to do on Sunday. The song, yes, watch it now. The song will move heads in the church, but it won't touch hearts in the service. Okay. You see, so, okay. so, so, okay. so now the, watch, the power, how we need to approach worship is that, watch it now. As a matter of fact, when, if, when we carefully study the Bible, the Bible does not necessarily teach the concept of worship leaders. That concept is not biblical. I know now I'm killing a whole lot of people's careers. You know, but the Bible doesn't teach the concept of worship lead. If you can go on your electronic Bible now, on that search engine, and click there and type the word worship lead, the result is going to be zero. Because the Bible doesn't teach that concept, unless for the, for the modern translation, because the term worship leader is not biblical. We have worship and we have leader, but we don't have a worship leader in the Bible. You know, and I asked the Holy Spirit one time, I've been leading worship for 25 years. Why you never taught anything about worship leaders? The Lord said to me, and I submit this for your consideration. The Lord said to me, God never taught, gave us doctrine about worship leaders because, watch it now, in God's mind, worship was never meant to be led. But, but but in the Bible, we have people 
who were going before the ark. Uh, we also have those that were going around the wall of Jericho. Uh, 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 and those yes. worship leaders. When, when, when we thoroughly examine those accounts, those guys were not leading worship. No, they were offering. They were not leading. There is no there is nowhere in the Bible where you find a card that says, now we have come to the most important time of the service now. Forget about your problems. Forget about your challenges. Come on, somebody, open up your mouth. Come on, don't just stand there. How can you come to the church and sit? There's all that nonsense we don't find in the Bible. That is our creation. In the Bible, they don't lead it. They are offering it. And the congregation get inspired by that. So we, we don't know our worship. We are leading people into doing what we don't do. That's why our worship experiences is stuck. But, because but tell, the worship me don't... tell me here, because you know, um, we, we are speaking of, of, of this concept and it's, 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 it's the thing that we live on a daily basis, you understand? And I once yes. had a, a, a concept to say, um, when you get to a whatever denomination or church, you, you worship yourself as an individual, you worship and, and, you know, it will be, you know, people are just gonna worship alongside with you but you know maybe we are trapped into this thing of of encouraging people to worship because you know maybe they don't feel the heat because you know when it is hot you don't tell anyone to go backwards when it is hot you don't tell anybody to take off their clothes it is automatic they take off their clothes so maybe it is just us did. who are leading they can feel the heat and therefore we need to bang them and tell them I let on your man, you understand? So it's that, you know, so 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 and I don't want to simplify the role of the worship leader because it, it's a subject by itself, you know. But now the, the, I think the the, the, the the key thought that we're throwing in is that whenever we appear before God, watch it, it takes God for human beings to worship God. You know, that is why it took the king's assistant for Esther to be pleasing to the king. You need inside info. And guess what? The assistant of the king lives inside of us. He's called the Holy Spirit. It's impossible to worship the Father without the help of the Holy Spirit, even if you have the height of the great singer. Ooh. So, so you. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, guys, now I'm laughing. Allow me to laugh. So, you mean. <laughs> you mean that. Uh, okay, worship. Okay, worship in my head when I say worship. I hear song. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking, what about those who sing out of key? So are you saying, <laughs> are you saying, uh, okay, worship song? What is the difference between worship and a song? Uh, you understand? Yes. And, 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 yes. and really, uh, okay, all right. Worship, the, okay. The key, thing, the, the key thing that we need to take away from tonight's lesson on worship and songs is that the songs we sing to God on Sunday, they must be soundtrack to the life we live for God during the week. So, but <laughs> so meaning, meaning, when I say to God, you are, you are holy, my Lord, you are holy. What I'm singing to him, it must be a soundtrack of the holiness that I display on a daily basis. Because when we sing songs of worship, God is not moved by the sound of my voice, but he's moved by the ground of my choices. Are you then telling us that 
we can get into a place, do what we call worship, enjoy ourselves, and go out and God has not received our worship that we offer to him? Emphatically, yes. Emphatically, yes. And as the church, the modern church, we have mastered the art of worshipping in the absence of the king. All right, unpack it. Unpack it. We Again, when we get there, we, we, we open in prayer. Holy Spirit, uh, uh, Holy Spirit would then tell him, and then, uh, yeah, we quote the scripture. You know, he, he, he endures the praises of his children. When the praises go up, the glory comes out, and we feel the chill, chill. And then a very nice soprano voice pitches, yes. you are Alpha and Omega, and we close our eyes, and we are close to heaven. And you are, you are bursting our bubbles? And now, now, the, 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 the sad thing, the sad thing about worship is that worship is, is not premised upon compliance to denominational uh, uh, standards, but is premised to obedience to biblical principles. If all that we are doing, if all that we are doing that we call worship is not premised upon obedience, it doesn't matter how beautiful the sound is. Remember what, some, what God said to Saul through Samuel in 1 Samuel 15. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, so the time you have sacrificed to go to church becomes unprofitable for us if all that is not premised upon obedience to biblical, watch it now, to biblical imperatives of worship. But how that do we get it right? We do, uh, how, how, how do, do we, we get it right? How do we, we get it we, right? We need, to, we need to come back to biblical principles. You see, this is what we have done as a church, these patients. And, and, and this is the thing that, that drives me to do what I do with the intensity that I do, to give up everything for this. It's because as the church, we copied David's practices but we neglected David's principles. That is why we are void of David's power. We copied David's practices, the singing, the playing of instrument, the wearing of uniform, and all those nice things, but we dropped David's principles. You must live a consecrated life for you to even serve before the ark of God. Holiness, purity, we drop all that. That is why now any Tom, Dick, and Harry that can sing, we put them on stage. Any guy we don't know where they woke up Sunday morning, we give them the microphone. It was not so in David's tabernacle. In David's tabernacle, your life was the worship and your singing was the soundtrack to the life. What you sang in the tabernacle must have been what you live in the tent at home. You see what I mean? So as the church, because of desperation, you remember what I mentioned in, 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 in the first episode? That I was one of those. Before, the, before I was born again, for three years I was serving. Why? Because I'm gifted. The desperation of the church leaders for good music has caused the church leaders to reduce the standard of God so they can accommodate gifted people to sing songs and bring the hype without the help of the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. The beautiful music that we have has drawn the crowds into our assemblies. But instead, it has chased away the cloud of God. That is why our gathering has the hype, but has no help for those who are in need. Is, 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 it, is it, you're saying something to me here. I, I hear you twice. I hear twice. You know, because, because, hey amen. You see, I'm messing up my hairstyle. <laughs> I am hearing something here, you know, 
it, 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 when when you know let me take you back to the to the issue of of the wall of jericho um we might not really talk about everything that happened there when they were going around and everything and they shout and everything and the wall and the wall the wall imagine the wall that wall we were told it you know the ancient walls they were not built like our stop nonsense you know that you can just you know, and it falls, or a, a car can come by and it falls. It was a wall. Apparently, I once had somebody say a car could drive on top of that wall. The way it was three cars, you know, the way it was, it was big because it was it was a way to fortify a city and a wall like that. It crumbled down. And are you saying to us, probably this is the reason why the sick come into our church you know the demon possessed come in the lane come in and they go out the same way and 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 is that the reason why probably we believe you know some people say miracles don't happen anymore is it because we have not created the atmosphere and when i look at the at the example when when they were uh, uh, when God said, you know, we need to follow the ark at a distance. When I read that scripture, I asked myself, why should we follow at a distance? And it is because the attention, the attention, the attention must be somewhere else. You know, if you follow just behind, you you, you will not see the one, the one, the hey, I man. Is it a reason why our we feel like you know a pool when the pool doesn't 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 have water flowing in and out the life inside yeah. us it dies it dies stagnant water kills the inhabitants you know what I'm saying? let me let me just add on what you just said joshua chapter 6 let me show you with this kind of ministers joshua chapter 6 verse number 5 god says to joshua have seven priests carry the trumpets of ram's horn watch it in front of the ark. So now, meaning, as they were circling the walls of Chirik, watch it now, they were not following the presence. The presence was following the musicians. Flip this patient, I'm telling you now. They were not following the presence, meaning God is saying to us, I can only go as far as you take me. I can only go as far as I follow you. So the question that now we need to reflect on as music ministers, even as pastors who are on the broadcast, who are watching us tonight, is that do we, are we the caliber or do we have the caliber of musicians in on our stages every Sunday that are followed by the ark? Or we have musicians who get there and say, come Lord. Come, Lord, come down. You see what I mean? So, 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 then how do we get there? I'm glad you asked. We need to work. The problem in the church today, we don't have a music problem, my sister. We don't have a music problem. We don't have a singing problem. Music in the churches is great. The singing is amazing. We don't have a music problem, but we have a deficiency, watch it now, in the quality of the musicians and singers. So, so, so you say it's, we don't have it. We have a vessel issue. We have a container yes, issue. Yes, ma'am. You see what I mean? We don't have the problem with the music. Music is great. The problem is the deficiency in the quality. You, you see where I just read? It says, have seven priests carry trumpets of Ram's horn. Meaning, in other words, Joshua's praise team was made up of priests, not players. So Those guys are priests. We need to train them. We need to raise them. As the pastor, it's your responsibility to raise a priestly quality of worship leaders. That is why then God has inspired me to start the Churchill Academy of Worship. Because the vision God has given me, the mission is to raise the David breed of worshipers. 
that whenever they play, demons that have come upon the souls will leave. Those worship leaders, those praise team members, they are not hired, but they are raised. They are not rented. We don't rent them from joyous. We don't rent them from spirit of praise. We don't rent them from a worship house. We raise them. Men of God, roll up your sleeve and raise them with the grace God has given you. They are raised, not rented. They are built, not borrowed. Uh, but when you are firing us now, now, now you are taking, you are taking our jobs. <laughs> hey, pastors online, don't listen to him. <laughs> you are firing us now. <laughs> Always, but, 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 but we will we'll touch on this and more when, when whenever God gives us the grace to do those reviews. You know what? Let me please let, oh, let, let me deal with my with, with, with my third and last lady. Yes, please. Yes, please. The Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. John chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, oh wait, man, wait, wait. it's going down here. It's going down here. I feel like continuing. Well, Before, John chapter four. Before, before, John chapter before, four. Before, 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 before we wrap up on Esther, let me get back because I said Esther is teaching us the practicality. You know? mm -hmm. Now let me practicalize how God, how the Holy Spirit, the, the 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 friend of the King, revealed this to me. That how is it that Esther personified the King's heart? This is how I demonstrate it. Esther asked the friend of the King, "Tell me what is it that the my, that the King likes." So this is me now bringing now the, imag the, the imaginative aspect of interpretation. That I think that the friend of the king said to Esther, Oh, Esther, the king doesn't like Brazilian hair. Mm -hmm. Because if you come with long extension to a king who loves natural hair, you are a tenor for it. Esther, the king does not like short skirts. If you come with clothes that are revealing and the king loves a queen to wear clothes that are covering, you are turned off already. Yeah. And maybe I think the guy said, Esther, the king does not like, watch it now, the king does not like uh, 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 palms, flat shoes. The king likes the queen to be on stilettos. So it's if you like walk into the king's chamber with your palms and your slip-ons, you are turned off already. You so might you I might be fine yourself. You might be fine yourself, but the presentation is like the food. Yes, the food might be nice and delicious, but how you package it in the plate, it tells me yes, whether right I must me. enjoy the meal or I must enjoy the meal. Most definitely. So 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 I can imagine Esther having gotten the message that oh the king does not like uh, extensions. The king doesn't like clothes that are revealing. And he doesn't like flat shoes. And guess what? If all these three things are Esther's favorite, if this is how Esther came into the place, then worship says, for the sake of the king's pleasure, oh, come on now, ladies, for the sake of the king's pleasure, I'm willing to throw away that Brazilian hair. I'm willing to throw away those ministers. <laughs> I'm willing to throw away those slippers and start embracing things that I don't like per se. But I will do these things because the one I'm trying to please loves them. That's worship right there. So I should, I should, so I should worship with God in mind. And you know, I I love, I love hymns, you know. So I so when I get there. It is, it is God in my, it is no longer I that lives. Because I don't feel a veil. How can a dead person want to enjoy? Esther's desires had to die for her to become what is in the heart of the king. You can't be both. You cannot please God and please yourself at the same time. One needs to be laid on the altar 
and be burned down to ashes. Ah! Now you're taking us to the tabernacle. Now you're taking us to the tabernacle. You know, and it, God, God can only smell that which was put on fire and, and burned. And, and, you know, and us, Mina, Mina patients, I want to go raw as I am. You know, I want to, I want to get, I want God to see the me, me, me. I don't want God to, oh! Right there. So Esther had to change her hairstyle. Not because, watch it now. And, and, and for worshippers, this is very key. And, and, and whatever it means for the ladies, this is very key for worshippers. That worship brings us to a point where we do things, watch it now, not because we like those things, but because the king we want to please commands them. There are places where I don't go. Personally, I don't go to, I don't go to clubs. I don't go to any place that doesn't glorify God. Not because I don't want to. Hey, I would love now. I'm a piano, I'm Nandi. I'm a piano, I'm Nandi. I would love. Hey. I would love to ikish kishem a piano, but I don't go there. Why? Because that place does not glorify the King. That. Oh my word! I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. This ah. is getting through to someone right now. That you see that behavior, that friendship that you are holding on to which is not leading you to a life that glorifies God. Worship says you have to come to a point where you walk away from certain things and certain people that you like but are not pleasing to God. You leave them not because you don't love them anymore, but because they are drawing you to things that are displeasing to the king you claim to love. That's worship right there. Tell me here, I know I'm interrupting you. What is the what is the significance of of the mirror that was in the uh, tab outer court in the tabernacle where where you had to to wash your your face? Uh, is it your face or your hands? And you know the your mirror hands, yes. will will show you who you are. And what is the significance of that when we go to worship? And my other question is, does that then mean that you know the the the, the pastor or the leaders in the church, they need to be able to perceive from a spiritual perspective and not from a carnal mindset because if they don't, then it's going to continue with nice music without, you know, we are going to enjoy ourselves and the one we are, we, we are saying we're worshipping did not enjoy our worship. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Let me start with the first one. The significance of that um, of that brazen labor where the priest would wash their hands. The significance of, of that mirror is not so much in the washing, but it's how that thing was crafted. That 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 basin was made from what it now from the mirrors of the women oh man this is women's mouth so the women contributed their mirrors and, that and they used to look mirrors. at themselves in the women cherish yeah. mirrors so, so yeah carrying cherish mirrors hmm. you know because the mirror shows you the impurities guess what you never leave your house without looking at the mirror why because the mirror helps you to remove things that might disqualify you wherever you are going. So that mirror was saying to the priest, don't you dare attempt to go in there without having removed. So you are saying, okay, today I'm going to borrow a worship leader or a worshiper. As a worshiper, yeah. I actually need my daily mirror so that when I go to lead worship, I, I, I have behold myself in the mirror. I have been. If somebody walks in your office tomorrow morning and they just moved from the bed to the shower and put on clothes and never looked at themselves in the mirror, 
the moment they walk into the office, all of us will see a lot of things that are out of place. So the significance of that mirror, which is the word of God, is that it helps you I, 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 to remove all... This is a this is a show of its kind. Eh? It's a show of its kind, and and you know what? You just expose me, you know, because I I behave myself in all my shows. And uh, today I fail. <laughs> today I fail to behave myself. I am man. You are, well, now you're not right. You're not right. Let me allow you to. <laughs> let me allow you to take the next um two minutes and the last one. The and, last, and, yes, and tell us about the last one. Yes. The last lady, the, the, the Samaritan woman. All right. So remember, yeah, for, for, for the viewers and the listeners, we're dealing with the lessons of worship from the women in the Bible. That, 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 and one other thing that I pray for when I see Swami is that I pray that the women who are watching us tonight are actually drawing strength from what we are sharing. Mm. That as, as, as a woman, you are valuable to God. As a woman, you are considered in the critical lessons about worship in the Bible. Mm. So don't let anybody, don't let any man pull you down, make you feel insignificant. Because the one who made you has made you so valuable. Mm. Now, John chapter 4, actually, I think it's the climax of tonight's, of tonight's things. Why? Because to teach us about worship, Jesus left all the men in the tabernacle. Okay. Come on. To teach us about worship. Mm -hmm. Jesus left all the men in the tabernacle. And he located a woman in Samaria. Mm -hmm. You see, so as a woman, if you don't read the Bible, you will miss your value. And look for your value from other things that won't value you like Leah. And end up having to perform. Mm -hmm. But if you read the Bible, the Bible will reveal to you that you got something that can help you live your full potential. Walk with your head up, girl, knowing that the Father in heaven loves you and your value does not come from any relationship. No man should be the source of your value because already as a woman, God has selected has you. Valued you. Mm. you understand? God has valued you. I mean, Jesus left all the priests and the high priest in the temple. And he located, watch it now, a sinful woman. To unworthy. Teach us. Unworthy. An unworthy woman to teach us lessons about the kind of worship that the Father seeks. Oh, man, that on its own. That on its own. Jesus is taking someone who's unworthy to teach us about worthy worship oh man jesus will blow your mind that's why i love jesus that's why i try as hard as it is to follow jesus example sometimes it gets me to trouble but hey it is what it is wow so women girl, as you're listening to me tonight i want to affirm you tonight that you are god's elect <laughs> you are god's selection amen it doesn't matter who's leaving you. It doesn't matter who's walking away from you. It doesn't matter who's been appointing you. Guess what? Heaven is backing you. Right? Maybe that is why. Maybe that is why women even in our country are going through so much pain and abuse. You know why? It's because well, God set you up in Genesis chapter 3. When God said to the serpent, the seed of the woman is going to crush your head. From that day on, God caused enmity between the devil and the woman. Ask that is man. why, girl, listen, Ask listen to me, woman of God. That is why the devil has been using every Tom, Dick, and Harry to pull you down, to make you feel insignificant, to make you feel like you are not worth it, hey. to make you feel like you can make it. Hey. It's because the devil is afraid of you, girl. Oh, Take man. it from your brother tonight. Oh, man. Take it from your brother tonight. Oh, man. You are, you are all that God needs to make this world a better place. You have when it all. God need, when God needed to bring a Messiah in the world, he didn't have a conversation with the man. He had a conversation with the woman. 
That is why the enemy is threatened of you. But tonight, I'm sent by the Lord to minister to you, to encourage you that you got it. Get up tomorrow morning, put on the makeup. If you shaved your eyelashes, draw them on, girl. I'm talking to some ladies tonight. You know what? And go out there. This time, you will praise the Lord. You won't this, look at Job. This. You won't look at Peter. You will put, look, lift up your eyes to the hills where your help comes from. Oh, flip, man, I feel like my help comes ladies. from the Lord. You see what I mean? So Jesus, man, it's Jesus who's, made, who's making me feel like this. He left all, watch it now, all the honorable men in the tabernacle mm. and located a woman in Samaria. He left all who know, the, who, who, know the, the, who know how to read, who know, and located a divorced again and again and you again. I mean? Oh, man. This is the last woman. This is the last woman we would look at to try and learn some lessons. Why? She's had five husbands. Five husbands who were not hers. Even the one she had, the sixth one she left at home, was not hers. But guess what? This particular day in John 4, she met the seventh man. Seven is the number of completion. Which means her struggle has met its match and i want to say to the women who are watching us tonight that guess what your struggle if you listen to what i'm teaching you tonight and you take this word and you meditate on this truth your struggle the word of the lord will change the seasons of the life will make just you'll make where you are right now to be the seventh day to be the seventh man and your life is gonna turn right here now let's zoom in to this woman and learn the lesson in verse 20, this woman said to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Mm. Now, I perceive that thou art a prophet. When she perceived Jesus was a prophet, she raised the subject of worship. Okay. Jesus was not talking about worship in John chapter 4 from verse number 7. Jesus asked her for water. Jesus was talking about water. And I'm this woman, it. when, yeah, Jesus was talking about water. Jesus didn't ask her for worship. He asked her for water. And later on, she raises worship. So when you study this text in John chapter 4, and I'm glad that as I'm, do, as I'm talking to you tonight, I'm actually using my study Bible. Because actually, I, 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 do, I did a thorough investigation. And I'm going to show you now. In John chapter 4, between Jesus and this woman, when they converse, there's an, there, is, there is an interchangeability between water and worship. The word water and the word worship appears. A lot. Let me show you. The word water appears. Let me read for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The word water appears nine times in this text. And the word worship appears one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the word water and the word worship appears nine times. In this discussion, Jesus and this woman, they discussed water nine times. And later on, they discussed worship nine times to teach us that worship is to us. Well, let me rephrase. Worship is to your spiritual man what water is to your physical body. What are you saying? I'm saying worship is to your spirit man what water is is to your physical man as much as you can't live without water you will dehydrate to death your spirit man won't survive without worship it will dehydrate to death so are you saying we are dehydrated that is why when you come to church on sunday instead of of descending the pure water which comes from the present we opt for Coca-Cola, which comes from the team, the musicians. I, and Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola will never quench your thirst like water will. 
Coca-Cola has sugar. Sugar makes you more thirsty. That's what. Oh. Can you close this thing now? We just closing. <laughs> I am done. I'm done. You have already, you know, you have already fired me from my position. I, I am jobless. <laughs> I'm jobless. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. You have really Thank taken you. this this topic to a different level. I can't wait for for the review of your ten books. I have a request here that can we repeat this, please? Uh, I will talk to you outside of this uh, so that, you know, you know, when you see people's eyes, you can buy this on me. So I'll get you when it is just the two of us. So <laughs> <laughs> then we can talk about this. But in my heart, in my heart of hearts, you know, I know this is what you live with. You know, this is what God has given to you to do as a ministry. And, you know, it is not just uh, 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 um, anything that you do. You know, the Lord is using you mightily, globally on this. But I'm, I'm just saying we're going to talk on how to take this further. Because you know what? The truth is uh, a lot of us might underrate, have been underrating this discussion and a lot of us yeah. have been doing things thinking we are doing the right thing and if most of the things that we do they are out of ignorance is because we were not taught so we thank yes. god that he raised you to teach us and we bless the lord why friends that will be the end of our session we are at 25 past 10 now it's, it's a new thing in this show we didn't even feel the time as it was passing and because you are a busy man we will allow you to go and rest and continue with the ministry tomorrow may the lord bless you may the lord do you good and this recording will be available in case you want to share it with other people so i'll send you through the recording if there's anybody online that wants the recording please do get in touch with me i will definitely share the recording and i want to appreciate us all for staying on and until this time and we will meet again on this uh, very same show this show is called you inspire me today we were inspired in the area of worship and I can say my life has been changed and I will truly encourage pastors and ministers worship leaders and worshipers and and everybody else let's have this man come talk to us and and you know if you can't afford him talk to me I will I'll see how to twist this up. <laughs> I'll, I'll see how to twist this up. But let us have him come and talk to us, you know, and we need the anointing upon his life. Well, friends, I won't give you time to speak again because you're going to start another one. So I'm just going to play out with Go Explore featuring Rofi Wamanyaga. As they say, it shall not prevail. And until we meet again next week, Tuesday, 8 p.m., we will have another guest that will come and inspire you. It is a beautiful evening to me, and good night. Against me, the enemy shall not prevail.